All right, guys, so this is the Anchor Tech Selection webinar that I've cooked up for you. And we're going to be going over everything that I know about offsite optimization. When we think about optimization when in terms of SEO, so to speak, there's typically we're typically referring to all the knobs and levers that we can tweak in order to adjust things so Google likes our website. Most of the optimization levers are on the on-site. So that, that's when you're referring to stuff like, okay, internal linking, uh, word count, or optimizing different entities or adding schema. There's so much to do on on-site op optimization. But when it comes to off-site optimization, aside from which links you're building, the only really tweak that you have, the only lever you, that you have is the anchor text you send with the link. And so it becomes really important. If you want your site to rank quickly and effectively from an offsite perspective, you needed to have the thoughts about your anchor text. So in case you've never been on one of my webinars before, I'd like to make these very actionable. So what I'm doing today is I basically looked at our entire process for selecting anchor text at both of my agencies, Authority Builders and LeadSpring, and I put them together in a visual presentation and also really brainstormed out what are the things that I haven't even thought of before, the things that I haven't written down before, all these little tricks and, and hacks that I put together throughout the years and to deliver them in a webinar for you guys today. So why you should stick around for the whole webinar? Well, first, after I give you out the, the process that I'm doing at Authority Builders and LeadSpring, I put together 11, I don't know if I want to call them hacks or tricks, but basically just different anchor text uh, techniques that I've accumulated over the years. And then always, if you have questions, and there always are, make sure to stick around for the Q&A section at the end. So I'll be completely open for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, however long it takes to answer all your questions, whether they be about anchor text or about whatever your little heart desires, just, just let me know. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the webinar goals, what I want to accomplish today for you guys is just to show you how anchor text selection can make or break your backlinking efforts. And I don't, I'm not exaggerating here. It's it's easy to do anchor text right, but it's also very easy to do it wrong. And when you do it wrong, you could end up with an algorithmic penalty that happens quite common. And then even worse would be a manual penalty for unnatural links. And I'll talk about my experiences and running a manual penalty recovery service and all the horror stories we see quite often that have to do with anchor text. Number two, what I want to do is give you a repeatable process for selecting anchors. So I want to just give you a structure and a process so you can do it effectively and not get yourself into trouble. And then lastly, lastly, answer the questions you don't even know you have about anchor text. So this is where my brainstorm comes into play. And I've thought about all the things that people might not even know that they have. And we'll get that going throughout this webinar. So how I'm going to accomplish that, here's my agenda. So first, for the beginners, if you don't know what the hell I've been talking about this whole time, what is an anchor text? We're going to be going back and discussing what it is and then why why anchor text is so critical. Like, what's why would I be putting together entire presentations and speaking on it um, if it wasn't critical? So let's establish why it's so important. And then I'll be getting into the lead spring and authority builders anchor text selection process. So this is the quote unquote, giving out the farm part. And then as uh, appreciation for coming on this webinar and taking time out of your day, I always like to give out some free stuff. So we've put together something nice. It's a, it's a free analysis. Um, basically the process that we're gonna be showing you or I'm gonna be showing you that we do at Lead Spring and Authority Builders, we're gonna be doing that for you. Uh, all you need to do is sign up and we can, we're gonna take some time out of our days and give you a roadmap on how you should be building links. And then fifth, so after that, we'll get into some of these advanced techniques. So this is 11 advanced techniques for leveling up your anchors. And then as promised at the end, we'll get into that open Q&A section. Cool, cool, let's get started. So in case we haven't met before, my name is Matt, born in Fresno, California. When I was there, our claim to fame was the highest per capita grand theft auto in the nation, hell yeah. After that, I went to University of California, San Diego to study electrical engineering and I hated it. I ended up working for a company out of the Silicon Valley, developing, soft, developing software. Uh, I, was, I wasn't actually a dev. I was uh, what's called an application engineer. It's basically a software expert. And the software is used to create micro semiconductor chips for companies like Intel and Qualcomm. Really exciting stuff. 
So when one of my buddies gave me the four hour work week in 2009, I was just ready and primed to do whatever it takes to learn how to make money on my own. And the first experiments I had with making money by myself were affiliate SEO and clearly I fell in love with it. So about 2011, I sold all my crap and left the US and just started to explore my life full time as an SEO. This picture on the right is uh, me and my yacht. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> no, just kidding. You can rent these things for like $9 in uh, the south of Thailand. So this is where I live these days in Thailand. Okay, so um, these days, it looks like this. So I have Diggity Marketing. This is my parent brand. And you, if you go to diggitymarketing.com, you'll see my blog. I'm still an engineer at heart. So the way I look at incorporating new techniques into my process is I'm doing tests. Just like I saw Clint Butler on this webinar, I do tests similar to Clint Butler, single variable tests. I also do tests on live sites, taking averages and stuff like that. And I commonly blog about this at diggitymarketing.com. I also have a seven figure affiliate agency called LeadSpring. Some people would call it a media group and we're just completely set up for building, ranking, monetizing, and eventually flipping media content-based websites, affiliate websites, so to speak. Also have a seven figure client facing agency called The Search Initiative a backlink service called Authority Builders. You can see the Authority Builders logo. We're gonna be talking a lot about backlinks today. We've got some people from Authority Builders on this call. And I teach SEO at the Affiliate Lab and I've made a conference called Chiang Mai SEO Conference that should pick up next year in 2021 as long as we get this COVID stuff under wraps. So I uh, just wanna talk about why you're in good hands when it comes to anchor text. The rule number one is, like I just mentioned, I'm really into single variable testing. I like to test everything be before it becomes part of my process. I'm still doing SEO like an engineer. So the way single variable tests work is you take actual websites. These might be fake websites that are just used for testing, or you can actually run them on real websites that rank in, in high competitive SERPs. There's various ways to do this. And these websites, you'd, you could either have different pages and they would all have a, a similar similar set of stimulus going to them. So they might all have the same word count. They might all have the same optimization standards on on-site. And then we would apply an external variable, a single variable, and that's what we're trying to test. So if between all these pages and between all these websites, everything is the same, we introduce something new, then we look on the output, we see, okay, what's happened here? Did we see a ranking increase or a ranking decrease? And does that, that would signify to me that this addition of this new variable, this new link type, this new type of optimization is a good thing for SEO and ranking. So an example of this might be, maybe we could create on the same websites, 10, 10 different pages, and they all have, again, the same type of optimization standards. And then we would just send 10 links to each of these, and they, we'd have different anchor text ratios. So one of these web pages would have one target anchor text. The next one would have two target anchor texts. We go all the way up to 10, then we can see, okay, which one ranked the highest, and that's probably the best anchor text ratio. So this is interesting thing to set up. There's a flaw with this test that I'll talk about later because uh, I'll, I'll spoil the fun. This, this is all niche specific thing. So anchor test, text is niche specific, but this is the kind of test you can do to actually prove that this works or not. Reason number two is that I built a crap ton of backlinks. Okay, I, I like to put this slide together. This is the ongoing slide that I kind of use to tally things up. For my affiliate sites, I've built nearly 36,000 links. Uh, for, through my agency, nearly 43,000. At Authority Builders, we built nearly 84,000 guest posts. And when I used to run a PBN service, nearly 55,000. And the reason this is important, I just don't want to show off here, but the reason this is important is that I like to track and see, especially with these services down below, Authority Builders and Diggity Links, we have this process where whenever a new customer comes on board, we track their progress and we get back to them if they have a, a ranking increase because to build a relationship or you know, to create a testimonial or for marketing reasons, something like that. So I've had my ear to the grindstone. I've been watching how links perform for over six years since I've had the first service, Diggity Links. This process looks like this. If a customer places a link, Basically, we know what kind of keywords that, that link or they're trying to rank for. We can just look at the target page that the link was sent to and then extract out what are the target keywords that this person would want to rank to. It's pretty easy to do. Then we add them to a rank tracker and we monitor over time. Then eventually we'll start seeing 
stuff like this. So if, as long as the link was good or the anchor text was good or their website was good, we can see positive ranking increases. And that enables us to extract out, okay, what kind of anchor text is optimal to send with these kind of links? Or what kind of anchor text profile did they have already that set the stage for them to get these kind of gains, right? Okay, so today's focus is completely on anchor text selection. So when we're building our links, what is the best anchor text to use? And what is the best anchor text distribution to have going to an entire page on a website? So for the beginners, let's talk about what is anchor text in the first place. You must be pretty confused so far. So let's just define it. Our definition of anchor text, this is the clickable text in a hyperlink. So for example here, if we had this sentence on a website, read more about SEO at Diggity Marketing. Diggity Marketing, see, that's the clickable text in the hyperlink. That would be considered the anchor text. So the anchor text is Diggity Marketing. In HTML format, it looks like this. So you have your AHREF, you give the target URL, close the bracket, and then we have Diggity Marketing, the anchor text, and then we have the A part at the end to close the statement. So in case we all are a little bit rusty on this, why don't you log into your website and we'll practice creating this link right now and then continue forward in the webinar. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about why anchor text is important. Well, <clears throat> it helps Google fi figure out the topical relevance of your page. So what is your page about? And if you think about it, what is Google's job? They're trying to figure out what every page is about and how to sort them based on the ranking system, right? So this helps them figure out the first part of that. What the hell is this page about? So we have a page like this. This is Chewy. This is a page that sells cat food, right? And if there's a bunch of articles on the internet that are saying blah, 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 cat food, blah, 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 blah. And if they link to this Chewy page, all with the anchor text cat food, then Google starts to think this page is a little bit more about cat food. It's, Super easy to understand, but it's not that simple. We can't just go out and build links with a target keyword of what we want to rank for over and over and over again without abandon. Next is a powerful link with the target anchor text is still one of the biggest ranking signals you can get. Now, I told you guys that at, at Diggity Links, at Authority Builders, even now, when, when a new customer makes an order, we track what they want to rank for. And I can tell you with certainty, the likelihood of them getting a positive ranking increase when they send a target anchor text is much higher if they send a, if, if they send a non-target anchor text. So uh, it's a necessary evil to send the non-target anchor text, but still a target anchor text link is one of the biggest ranking signals you can get. If you have a page that's ranked number five, six, seven, eight, something like that. If you haven't sent the exact match target anchor text, it's, it's gonna move the needle if, as long as you send a good link. So, um, and then another reason that's important, when you get it right, you can expect faster ranking. So you'll rank quicker than if you're going way under-optimized, so to speak, or over-optimized for that matter. You know, better rankings will rank higher. It's efficient use of your resources. So as long as you're sending anchor text properly, then your backlinks are getting their mileage. You're getting their mileage out of them. And then if you do it right, of course, there's a low chance of penalty. It's, if it looks very natural, Google's algorithm wouldn't be able to sort out and see that there's anything funny going on here. Now, when you get it wrong, you can just look at the converse of all these things. Experience, you can experience slow ranking. So just websites just aren't moving. You're sending links, you're getting gains, but it's just really slow or sometimes even flat or negative rankings. So if you keep sending target anchor text over and over again to a page, hoping it's gonna work, you could just end up with flat rankings or start tanking the page itself. So that's obviously not a good thing to do. And if, of course, if you're getting flat rankings, that's a waste of link equity. You know, Links take time or money to build. So what's the point in doing it if you're not going to get gains out of it, of course. And then there's an extremely high chance of penalty if you do it wrong. So I mentioned before, I have a penalty, manual penalty recovery service with Rick Lomas, and we focus on unnatural links penalties. And I can tell you, the highest cause of triggering a manual penalty is overcooking your target anchor text, it's hands down. So we see them time to time from some people build scholarship link campaigns or some other kind of uh, link building campaigns that don't quite work anymore or just kind of spammy stuff. But I'd say four to five times the reason that they get a manual penalty in the first place is overcooking their anchor text. So really got to watch out for this and I'm going to show you how we do it. So what is the overall key to anchor text? The 
just if you want to sum it up, if this if you're going to take one screenshot of this entire presentation, it would be this slide. You want to be able to send as many keyword target anchor texts as possible because those are the ones getting you the gains. But you're going to temper that with maintaining a natural organic anchor text distribution. So that's the main focus of this presentation. How can we look super organic and look super natural to Google's penguin algorithm? That's the algorithm that hunts this kind of stuff down. So before we get into that, I need to establish what are the different types of anchor text. First, I've said this before, target anchor text, developed by this company called Target. They also sell really cool stuff like Legos. No, just kidding. It's nothing to do with Target, but my definition of target anchor text, and I've highlighted my definition. There's going to be tons of definition, but it doesn't matter. All you need to do is stick to a convention and just stick to it. That's it. But my definition is any anchor text that has even a single word of the, any of the target keyword phrases that you want to rank for. So an example of this would be if I want to rank for best protein powder, this is the target anchor text. My favorite protein powder is because it has the word protein in it and powder in it. This is also one, just protein powder. Or this is one, just powder. Or just the word best. Or just the word protein. Like any of these, if it just has any kind of overlap with any kind of keyword phrases you want to rank for, consider that a target anchor text. And it's all about convention here. You can make your own rules up, but just stick to it. That's all I ask. So as I mentioned before, target anchor text moved the needle. This is just what we see over and over again from building a bazillion links. But the, the key, the thing here is if you overdo them, this is how you get penalized. So you got to watch out for this. Your other anchor texts, all your non-target anchor texts are commonly known in the SEO slang community as pillow anchors. This is pillow links, pillow anchors. These are what we do to kind of set the stage to make things look natural is build pillow anchors. And let's get into what are the various types of pillow anchors. First, we have branded anchor text. So some examples of these would be what is just a brand. So examples, Amazon, Uber, Tesla. These are all brands of companies. And they have nothing to do with keywords that they want to rank for. It's just brand name, right? And we have another fictional brand. Actually, I don't even know if this is fictional, but I'm using it as an example in the rest of this webinar to kind of illustrate some points. So muscle factory, right? Then we have Diggity Marketing. If you look at the anchor text going to my website, Diggity Marketing is the most frequent one. So Diggity Marketing is a brand anchor text and typically the most frequent anchor text that's sent to a website or web page is brand anchor text. Another variation would be the author of the website. So Matt Diggity, that's my second most used anchor text, Matt Diggity, and that's also a branded anchor. So here's a caveat. It's branded only if it doesn't contain a keyword. So some, some example, or one example is, if we have this keyword best protein powder, right? We have a URL muscle factory. And if I send the anchor text muscle factory to this website, of course, that's a branded anchor because it doesn't have any overlap with the keywords best in protein powder. But a URL or a website called protein shop, anytime you're sending protein shop as an anchor text to any kind of best protein powder page, consider it a target anchor text and just follow this convention for me, please. Now we have URL anchor text. So this would be all variations of muscle factory, HTTPS version, um, no www and musclefactory.com. Here's another variation. So I've slapped on the www. Here's another variation. I've taken off HTTPS and I put a backslash or forward slash at the end. Here's a very clean one, just musclefactory.com and so forth. I believe there's 16 variations of this or something like that. Now we have topical anchor text. So just think one category level up of what you're trying to rank for here. So if we use the best protein powder example, that could be fitness. So fitness is a category above protein powder or supplements, of course, or bodybuilding. So these would be topical anchor text. And then we have miscellaneous anchor text. You guys have seen these a lot. We have read more, click here, this article, blah, blah, blah. And then any anchor text, this is just like whatever, whatever else we can't really classify. So some examples of this would be if you have missing anchor text. So this usually comes from images that are linking to your website and they haven't filled out the alt tag parameter. So this would be no text. That's how it looks in Ahrefs. Another one might be just gibberish. These are like from scraper sites. It just doesn't make any sense at all. Or maybe foreign words. That's what you would lump into NA, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So what is anchor text distribution? I've also, I've also said this earlier. So this definition is 
it's your page specific blend of anchor text coming into a single page. So it's not a site wide thing. It's not your overall website anchor text distribution. It's calculated on a per page basis. So let's say I have a page that's trying to rank for protein powder, best protein powder. So this page might have 25% target anchor text, 35% brand, 20% URL, 15% miscellaneous, and 5% NA. So that would be my anchor text distribution, the overall pitch you're going here. And this is what determines your success at anchor over optimization or anchor optimization in general. So this, these particular ratios will determine if you rank fast or rank slow or get penalized, et cetera. So the goals here, what you want to do is you want to look diverse and natural. You want to have a distribution that looks realistic to happen in the real world. Google just doesn't want you to build your own links. So I know that's a, a fable and like pretty much anyone in any kind of competitive niche builds their own links. So when you're building them yourself, you need to make the effort to make them look natural, right? And then your second goal is obviously to be effective and make sure you're ranking as fast as possible by sending an appropriate amount of target anchor text. So how do we determine the optimal anchor text distribution, right? Let's first talk about how not to do it. So this is, is there's no magical anchor text distribution that applies to every niche. So I don't see this that much anymore, but you know, like, Earlier, maybe five, six years ago, you would always see just this one size fit all, fits all anchor text distribution that people would were recommending in their backlinking guides and generic places on the internet, right? So they always look like this, 10% target anchor text, 50% brand, 20% URL, 15% MISC, and 5% NA. This is just this, some, someone made this up someday, it made sense to other people, started copying it and just like, yeah, that's what, what, what probably looks natural, right? This is bullshit, right? This this doesn't exist in the real world. I mean, I mean, sure, it exists coincidentally, but it doesn't exist in every niche. So what you're looking for is a niche-specific one based on who's ranking already. So reverse engineering the people that are already ranking in the top positions, looking at their dis distributions, and creating that for your niche itself. So this is how you do it. The, the thing about Google these days, and I'm sure a lot of people agree with this, is it's like playing poker but you can see your opponent's hands. So like the people that are ranked in positions one, two, and three, you're playing poker against these guys, but they're, they're playing with these, their cards shown backwards, right? So what we can do in regards to anchor text is we can use backlink tools to see what anchors our competition use to rank already, and then take the average of what they did in order to figure out what we need to do, right? Super easy to understand, and here's how to do it. First, I use Ahrefs for this kind of thing. So you type in Site Explorer and you type in the URL that one of your competitors. So this guy's probably ranked first for best vitamin C serum, right? And then we can see here in the anchor text, right? They have this first anchor text, amazing vitamin C serums. What kind of anchor text is that? According to my definition, this is a target anchor text. They have three referring domains. So let's add three to this target anchor text bucket. Here's a URL anchor text. So let's say they got two of those. Here's another target anchor text. So add two more. So now we have a total of five target anchor text and so forth. Just keep going down the list, right? Until we figure out the distribution. So it kind of looks like this. So the process is we're going to figure out the anchor text distribution for site number one. So let's say for this keyword, selling my car, how to sell my car online, sell my car online. Site number one in the first position is 30% targets, 25% URL, 40% NA. That's a ridiculous amount of NA. And then 5% uh, miscellaneous. Then you continue forward and you do it for sites two, three, four, five. If you want to be more succinct about it, sometimes we do sites one, two, and three, but if you want to be super nerd level on it, go sites one through five. Then what you do is you take the average. So you, if you see here between sites one through five, the average target anchor text spread over these guys is 31. The average URL, 24, and so forth. And you can see here, this target anchor text average is 31. It has nothing to do with this generic 10% target anchor text that used to be the case five years ago in SEO. So it's niche, very niche specific, right? So now that you have the map, the whole goal here is how to get from A to B. So if this is my current situation, what do I need to do to hit this kind of anchor text distribution? And I can just see from eyeballing it right here. So we have 6% NA acres and this has 16. Just probably focusing on these guys for the short term would be the best course of action to rank in this niche, right? 
Okay, so some best practices here. So there's definitely some pitfalls and some things you need to look out for. Anchor distribution, as I mentioned this before, anchor text distribution is solved on a per page basis, which means if you have a super well-balanced homepage that has 100% brand anchor text, that means nothing for your inner page that is overcooked. It, it's not a overall holistic website-based thing. Anchor text distribution and the Penguin algorithm is run on a per page basis. Next, you wanna choose the main keyword you wanna rank for to do this reverse engineering analysis. So yes, I wanna rank for best protein powder. No, I don't wanna rank for protein powder. It's a different search intent. It's an e-commerce search intent. So I would reverse engineer best protein powder exactly. After that, let's ignore our mega authority sites that are ranking with just a few links. So if I'm up against WebMD for best, best, best protein powder, then I'm not going to reverse engineer them if they only have two links. So they're probably two target anchor texts. And I don't want a 100% target anchor text website to mess up my average ratios. So just ignore these guys and move on. And then I also mentioned this before, stick to your convention. As you can see, if I'm defining a target anchor text as one thing when it comes to my sites, but site number two and three, I'm defining it as something else, it's going to mess you up. So just stick to your convention. You can decide that target anchor text has a completely different definition for you, but just stick to it and you'll get the job done. All right, so why not just let this happen naturally? If the whole goal is to look natural, then why not just let it happen naturally? Well, first off, if you're listening to this webinar, most likely you're a professional SEO and you don't ignore link building anyway. So if you're not ignoring link building, then you're not doing anything naturally. And thus the links that you're placing, you're controlling their anchor text, I would think. Second is optimal anchor text might happen naturally. That would depend on the optimal anchor text. Just randomly people on the internet just decide like why would they randomly just be able to hit your niche specific target anchor text. That might happen naturally. So the goal here is just why leave that up to chance? If, if you can control something and you can control the fate of your website and how well it ranks, why would you just let it happen naturally anyways? Okay, so let's take a pause real quick. I want to give you guys a quick offer that we've done on pretty much every single webinar, but we've spiced it up. Last time we opened this up for 250 people, this free analysis, and it got sold out. So or not sold out, but it got filled up. So we're bringing this back and we spiced it up a little bit with anchor text analysis. We're gonna help you out. We're gonna help you do this exact thing that we've talked about, anchor text analysis and figuring out what you want to rank for. If once we get the keywords you wanna rank for, then we can reverse engineer the competition and then figure out a backlink plan for you. So the anchor text analysis also includes what we call link gap analysis. So we're doubling up. We're giving you anchor analysis and link gap. Let me explain what the link gap is in case you're, you're not familiar with it. So if we want to rank for best curling iron, I can see these top one, two, and three guys here. So rank and style, good housekeeping, and birdie. So to determine the link gap, this is the how many links you need to build in order to compete with these guys. So if we look at site number one, rank and style, they have various links in each category. So in this DR domain rating, 20 to 30 range, they built four links. In 31 to 40 range, they built five links. In 41 to 50 links, they built three and so forth. So we do the same for sites two and three, then we compute an average. So this is very similar to anchor text analysis. We're computing an average here. And then I, I can see what's my situation. So my website, I wanna rank for best curling iron. I got this kind of distribution going on. So I got two links here, one link in this category, and then we can just compute the difference. So these are the links that you need to build in each power level in order to compete with these guys. So just like with anchor text, there are some pitfalls here. So one is you have to consider the domain rating because essentially a link uh, that, or a website that's ranked with a DR80. So that has a huge, huge chunk of authority, right? You won't be able to build just three links to compete with that. If it had three, three links going to it, those three links are much more powerful than your three links on your DR20 website. So you need to multiply this link gap by the scaling factor. The equation's a tiny bit complicated because uh, DR is an exponential scale. So we, we, get, we can help you out with that. Just don't worry about that. We, we got the equations worked out and everything. So we'll be able to figure out the link gap and uh, apply that scaling factor to get you sorted out. Also, you don't want to count nofollow links. So nofollow doesn't contribute to any of these uh, calculations or anything like that. 
Another thing that I didn't mention here, but you want to worry about black sheeping your page. Black sheeping is, let's say everyone on page one is able to rank with three, four, or five links because they have a high authority. You have a low authority, so your, your calculations show that you need to build 20 links. So I'm going to make sure you don't do that. Anytime you're the only weirdo on page one with 20 links and everyone has three, you're going to have a hard time ranking above them. Okay, so here's how to sign up for this free analysis. So I'm going to give you some help here. Book a free back, backlink gap analysis at authority.builders backlink dash strategy. And this will enable you to analyze your competition. We're going to put that together for you. We're going to create a link strategy one-on-one -on -one with our SEOs. And then this includes anchor text analysis for one keyword included for the first 50 people. Unfortunately, we can't give this out to all 250 people just because it's super labor intensive. We have to classify each anchor text, not only going to your website, but all th three of the top three competitors. So yeah, it takes a lot of time. So we're just reserving that for the first 50 people. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, here's how you sign up. You go to uh, authority.builders backlink dash strategy. You're gonna see a form here, just put in your name, your email address, and then the URL you want to rank. We need to know what page you're trying to rank and the target keyword you're trying to rank it for. And then just set up a call. So we're going to be booking one-on-one -on -one calls with you to explain how we come to this analysis. We can show you how, how we do it. And we're pretty much operating around the clock. So every half an hour, 24 hours a day, we got full coverage across the globe. We'll be able to help you out with this. So what you can expect here, you're going to get an expert sets of, set of eyes on your site. So our guys are pretty damn solid. Uh, these guys are all run their own affiliate pro, pro uh affiliate portfolios or have clients themselves. So you get an expert set of eyes on your site. We'll formulate a rock solid link building plan that includes a link gap analysis and the anchor text. And if you need help executing that plan, should you want us to help you build the links, we have a special promotion going on to the end of the month, which is ABC plus. So ABC plus is our managed link building service. So we do this analysis and then we figure out you need to build these kind of links with these kind of anchor texts. And then we start rolling that out over time with guest posts on high traffic authority websites on the internet. And so the offer going on to the end of the month is no setup fees. Typically there's a $200 setup fee. So we're waiving that till the end of the month through this link, authority.builders backlink strategy. So just to talk a tiny bit about ABC plus, ABC plus has access to what we call the vault. And this is a golden archive of the best links and the best websites that we work with. Like I mentioned before, we always track to see which links are performing well for our customers. So the performing link will be uh, utilized for ABC Plus. ABC Plus gets the, uh, the cream of the crop, so to speak. And then uh, here's some results from ABC Plus. So this is high competition affiliate website. You can see there's 1,900 search volume. This is ranked in the United States. Our client got from rank number 12 to rank number five fairly shortly. You can see their organic traffic graph over time. That's, I mean, they when they just got on board with us, they weren't doing much at all, but 5,792% traffic increase. I think this client's pretty happy. And then this also works in local SEO. So in UK and in London, you can see in the keywords here, I've, I didn't cover the London part of it. This is obviously the most competitive keyword in the UK and no slouch on the search volume either, 5,400 searches per month. And this site's cooking pretty well. It's, it's really starting to pick up and this client's happy as well. We also do white labeling too, because, because we do all the analysis and because we uh, like figure out everything for you. Like a lot of agencies like to just outsource all the link building to us because they get these nice reports that they can give to these clients and our links are good and we get results like these all the time. Okay, so just some quick words from our customers. Customer sent this over today. This guy was using age domain, ABC plus. This is one of the steepest, steepest traffic boners I've ever seen, but this guy's cooking, cooking. And then we have uh, a lot of uh, customers use ABC plus just to build the overall authority of the website. So you don't have to focus on one single page at a time and laser target the link gap and the anchor text, but you can just, we can build links overall to your entire site. So this customer reported, you went from DR18 to 32 in a month. And as you can see, the overall traffic on the website is increasing just by growing, growing the overall authority. So again, to book this, just go to authority.builders, backlink-strategy. The anchor text analysis is unfortunately only available for the first 50 people. So 
make sure you go jump on that if that's your interest. Okay, let me just take a quick swig of water. We've been going pretty hardcore. Now we'll get into anchor text mastery. So this is 11 techniques to level up your anchor text. There's a lot of, I gave you the structure, but I didn't give you the details on, okay, you told me I need to build this many target anchor text based on the competition. Well, what actual target anchor text should I build? You know, what Should I just use my exact match anchor text over and over? We'll get into all that stuff right now. So rule number one is never use a target anchor text more than once. If I'm trying to rank for dog training, instead of just spamming, so if all five of my target anchor text is dog training, that looks super unnatural. Let's vary that up. Instead of dog training over and over again, I'm varying up with dog training once, and then training for dogs, great dog training, dog training tips, tips dog obedient training, all this kind of stuff. So just vary it up. Remember, naturalness is the key. Like how likely would five independent people that consist of your entire target anchor text profile link with the exact same anchor? So mix it up and you're going to get not only a safer result, but a better result. I do from time to time send exact match target anchor text twice. So that's just in certain cases, if I know I'm sending a bunch of links, I would send dog training exactly twice. But when there's a low amount of links, the likelihood of this exact thing coming in twice, the statistics are very low. Rule number two is leverage the SEO title tag. So what is the SEO title tag? So when you're looking at the Google search result, this is the part at the top. This is a clickable link. This is also known as your meta title, your SEO title tag, et cetera. This is usually something you set with your Yoast or all-in-one, Rank Math, whatever you got, uh, your SEO plugin. So you set the title here. Now, this is a very, very common natural anchor type. So if we look at Diggity Marketing's anchor text profile, you can see that I have two title tag anchor texts that are coming up a lot. How to properly track and manage backlinks. So that's one article that I've written. And another one, how to steal the featured snippet in three steps. It's another article I've written. And they each have 10 referring domains with this exact match or this uh, title tag anchor text. So it's a very common natural type. And when you're building links on forms, not that I recommend this, but just this is just an anecdotal story. A lot of times when you build a link on a form, it's gonna default your anchor text to the title tag of the page that's linking to anyway. So it's very, very common. So feel free to use this one more than once to get target anchor text in. As you can see, this, these are natural links. Like I didn't build any links like this. These came in naturally. So if anything happens naturally, that's what you can use more than once. Rule number three is you wanna match the anchor text with the link type. So various link types, depending on where they're placed in a website, more commonly have different anchor texts occurring within them. So if we think about blog articles, right? Any article that's written about a certain topic, or whatever, most of the time they're referencing something that their readers need more information on. So uh, we were able to find the best ping pong table here at this website, ping pong pros, right? So there's a couple of different anchor text opportunities in that sentence. We were able to find best ping pong tables. So that's a target anchor text that they could have used to refer their reader to find the best ping pong tables. The latter part of the sentence says at pingpongpros.com. So that could be a brand, right? So that's a brand anchor text. That's a bad example because the brand has target keywords in there, but you get what I'm talking about, right? So target and brand seems to show up a lot in blog articles. And then we have link lists, which could also show up in a blog article. So this would be like a numbered list or a reference section at the bottom, or here's what my top 10 favorite blogs regarding SEO or anything like that. So typically in these link lists, you're looking at brand anchor text. So I like Backlinko, I like Diggity Marketing, I like Nathan Gotch, like you're just listing out the brands, right? Or you can just give the URL anchor text over and over again. So link list is common for URL anchor text. Sidebars, typically these are gonna be some kind of image. So you're getting an image to check out someone's banner ad or something like that. So a lot of times they're using topical anchor text here or just straight up empty, so NA anchor text. Forums, you know, URL or SEO title comes up a lot and blog comments if you're into that sort of thing. Most of the time you're gonna be using a name, so that's gonna be brand anchor text, right? Rule number four is to break up your keyword phrase. So if I'm trying to rank for plumber in Chicago, Instead of just keeping on spamming plumber in Chicago, plumber in Chicago over again, or Chicago plumber, any of these kind of variations, try doing something like this. Just send plumber. 
or just send Chicago. Why does this work? You guys, I, I have no idea. Like a lot, a lot of the stuff, I have no idea why it works, but I'm constantly testing and tracking. And this is just something I've found when I start to get stuck sending links. If I just break up that phrase, as long as I can send more target anchor text, just try sending the single word. Rule number five is to always write in English. Oh my God, I see this so often with the link building services that I've run in the past. Uh, so anchor text always needs to work properly in a sentence. Think about this, we're trying to look natural. If I want to place a certain anchor text and there's no way that anchor text would work in a sentence, that's not natural, right? So plumber Chicago, right? How would this possibly work in a sentence? I found a plumber Chicago last week. That was great. No, it doesn't work in a sentence. How about this one? Plumber in Chicago. That works in a sentence. But why would you ever not capitalize the word Chicago, right? It's a proper noun. So yes, plumber in Chicago, that works in a sentence. Get your English and your grammar correct. Rule number six, use brand and target anchor text. This is a combination anchor text. I don't define it in its own category because there's no need. But this is a very common anchor type. It, you can you can use this for target anchor text. So if we see, for example, this is an Amazon page, they're selling diffusers, something like that. You can see how often these, they got their brand in here and they're using target anchor text as well, the diffuser aromatherapy as well. So it's a very common one that comes up. Rule number seven, you wanna diversify your URL anchors. This is very similar to what I was mentioning for target anchor text. So what are, what are the odds that 100% of independent people that are supposedly linking to you on the internet are only using their URL anchor that looks exactly like this, HTTPS, www, no trailing slash at the end. So mix this up, nearly 0% chance of 100% independent people doing that. So mix it up, your, your URL category should have diversity within itself. Rule number eight, so incorporate long anchor phrases. So uh, SEO is going to do it like this. I want to rank for plumber in Chicago and Chicago plumber and plumber in Chicago, Illinois. So those are the anchor texts I'm going to send over and over again. But often in the natural world, you might get long phrase anchor texts coming up. So something like, uh, we found a highly recommended plumber in the metrop metropolitan Chicago area by checking out this website. Like you could be used highlighting that whole phrase that's in these quotes right here. Or this plumber base just south of downtown Chicago or this Chicago plumber I found recently on Yelp did the job, something like that. Just mix it up. Rule number nine, synonyms are an absolute cheat code, all right? So when you're maxing out on target anchor text, so let's say I've hit the cap. I'm supposed to be able to spend, send 35%, I've hit 35, right? Use LSI keywords or synonymous entities, whatever you wanna call it, instead. And this is easily determined with the Google search. So. If I want to rank for how to sell a car online, and I've already sent all the target anchor checks I can, so one thing I can do is just substitute the word, to substitute the word car with a synonym. So I can type in how to sell an automobile online. And you can see here, Google has actually bolded the synonyms, auto, cars, and vehicle. These are all what they consider to be synonyms. So now I can go to town sending synonyms to the page. I can just send the word automobile or automobile auction or whatever, automobile websites for e-commerce or anything like that to get some synonyms in our anchor text profile. The awesome thing about this is you get credit as if it was a target anchor text, but you don't risk over-optimization. Rule number 10, when you have to send these necessary evil pillow anchor texts, these non-target anchor texts, you can surround them with target anchor or target keywords in order to give them a little bit more power. So. Pillow and anchors are necessary evil. We have to build them in order to create a natural linking uh, distribution, but give them a little bit more power by surrounding them with keywords in your placement. So example of this is, we found an excellent list of this year's best laptops under 500. That's a keyword I'd want to rank for at techreview.com. So I have to send a branded anchor text, but it's very close to the keyword I want to rank for. Now, rule number 11, this is the last and final rule. If you mess up, removing and replacing links is much, much better and faster than diluting your link profile. So let me just think of this scenario, right? Let's say you have 100 links going to a page and 40% of them are target anchor text. You want to be 20% target anchor text. So you need to get this down. You need to fix this ratio. 
How many links do you think it'll take to dilute your link profile in order to get 20%? That's right, 100 more links. It would take you 100 links to fix this ratio. So the answer here is just remove and replace. I'm sure you have some of these links that you're not that proud of, some of them that you built three years ago that didn't have the same, same standards that you use today. So go ahead and get those removed, disavowed, whatever, and then you start to replace. You're fixing your ratios will be light years faster than dilution, of course. All right, guys. Thank everyone for sticking around to the end. Of course, if you want to build, book that uh, free backlink strategy, go to Authority Builders Backlink Strategy. We've got the link gap analysis, the anchor text analysis for you guys. And if you want to join ABC Plus with zero setup fees, that's going on to the end of the month, October 31st. Now, let me just take a swig of water. And then, as promised, I'm open for Q&A. Still with us, Jake? Yep, I'm still here. Nice, nice. Cool. So I'm ready to go. So whatever kind of questions that are still left over from the chat, and if you have new questions, sure, just dro drop them down in the chat box and I'll get them answered for you. All righty, we got one coming in here uh, from Michael. Is it best uh, for your exact match anchors uh, to come from the most powerful set? Yeah, so that's generally the the MO. So I tested this. I don't like to commit to something that I haven't tested to recently, but I tested this probably about five or six years ago. So you definitely want your most powerful links to be coming from the pages or the, the websites, the web pages with, with the most page rank. So ideally, the ones that had the most links going to them. So that's the ideal situation. Or alternately, like you can get your highest DR links with your target anchor text because you're getting a lot of page rank from the internal linking on that kind of website. That said, I don't like to commit to anything that I haven't tested recently, but I've kept up that strategy the whole time, but it's probably time to test that again. I'm sure it's, it still works, but I'm not sure. All right, we got some more coming in here. Uh, they're coming in pretty hot. Um, when when doing anchor text analysis, do you consider both no follow and do follow links as equal? That comes from Greg. No, so anything no follow, I just don't include them in the analysis. I actually just thought of two pretty important questions. I'm gonna give you guys a chance to ask them and see if they come up naturally, but uh, I got two things I wanna part on you guys with. What else we got, Jake? Um, let's see here. Um, all right. We've got quite a few coming in. Um, I've had a lot of guest posts or links already. Do you recommend powering them up with uh, tier two links? So if you're doing a tier two link strategy, typically the types of links you would use for your tier one would be guest posts. The types of links you would use for your tier two would be high page rank type links, which is typically PBNs. Now, everyone that we work with at Authority Builders is someone we consider our partner. So these websites that exist on the internet, these are our partners. So I can't, with consciousness, uh, with, with, with good conscience, uh, recommend that you build links to our customers. But that is the protocol that most people use. OK. Uh, Brand has a question about um, anchor text for um, uh, local SEO and specifically um, press release. Uh, what kind of anchor text would you use for press releases? Um, would you target inner pages? I'm not very bullish at all on press releases unless they're of a certain quality. So I kind of categorize them as you know, we have our press releases that are $100, $200. And for the most part, the way these things get syndicated is they're going to like a lot of uh, you know, like local news sites and like KFSR, whatever, like these random like radio stations that have news sites and stuff like that. And for the most part, I'm thinking that they get ignored. I haven't seen much gain from them in quite some time. But it, you're uh, like the the second level of this is considered digital PR, which you would go out, you would create a viral story, something that's very shareable and very interesting to high level news sites. And then you're getting placed on websites like Fox News, NBC, and stuff like that. So 
If we're talking about PR, then I would definitely recommend the latter. Um, for the anchor text that you would use, you definitely want to go to with either branded or URL anchor text because you'll definitely overcook your website. But it's just been a long time since I've been able to see some positive gains from the, the cheapies. Okay. Um, Luke's got a one good one about um, uh, established competitors and whenever you're analyzing their links. He says, for competitive uh, terms and established competitors, uh, can you ever tell if the competition has done a disavow on their links? Um, without that knowledge, is there a danger of over-optimizing over or walking into a penalty? Yes, yes, for sure. So this is one of the pitfalls. Another pitfall is if people are hiding their links with PBNs, but you can just assume that they would be using target anchor text for those anyways. But this is a risk. And th that's the thing. This whole process, you're looking for guidance and not precision, right? So that's why I don't give you 24 different categories of target anchor text, brand plus target, target long tail, target phrase and all that kind of stuff because I'm mixing in this, this amount of hand waving into it. So things like disavow aren't going to sting you, right? Now, if you, like the only time I would definitely just ignore a website is into my analysis is if it just has a few links and it's an authority site and I can just see like it's going to mess up my averages. Or if I look at its link profile and it's spam to hell, then if it's ranked in those top positions, then it probably means those spam links have been disavowed. And then I just ignore it. Got it. All right. Um, next one's coming from Joshua. Um, he says, Matt, I noticed you're using DR as an analysis metric. Uh, how do you handle competitors that are manipulating DR to fluff their metrics with tons of links? I don't think you're gonna come up with that that often in high ranking SERPs or high competition SERPs because people, people who try to compete in any kind of keyword that makes money and stuff like that, their goal isn't to raise DR. Their goal is just to get ranking. And the techniques used to raise, raise DR, those are techniques you find on Fiverr and they hurt rankings. Like you don't want to be doing that. I don't think you're gonna encounter it that much. This is what people, People who inflate DR are the ones that just want to be like a guest post farm or backlink farm, et cetera. Like those aren't the people ranking in high competition or any kind of affiliate spaces or anything good because there's no point. It hurts you. Got it. Uh, yeah, this one's a um, little bit related here. Um, this comes from Gideon. Uh, he says, uh, I have a few pages uh, on my site that are about to break page one. A question I have on Anchor Text is, uh, I have a high number of blog comment links to my homepage from way back when I started this website. Brand, URL, anchors, etc. Would removing or disavowing at this time be a good or bad idea? So this is something I'm yet to test, but it's been on the list for quite some time. I haven't been that excited to test about it because I don't use blog comments anyway. So this <laughs> these results don't wouldn't even help me at all. But I have a strong hunch that any kind of links on just kind of typically spammed uh, link types like blog comments or forum, forum profiles and forum links and that kind of stuff are just completely ignored by Google. So that would include the anchor text as well. So my hunch is that it's already ignored, but I don't have the exact answer for you because I haven't tested it recently. All right, good. Um, Hari says, um, when doing the anchor audit, if a brand has a target keyword in it, what category would you put that anchor in target or brand? Um, target, get target. Answer. Remember, just stick to your convention, right? If it has a, you, you can define it however you want. You can make a new category up yourself, brand plus target, right? I just recommend sticking to the con convention because it just works for me. All right. Questions are slowing down a little bit. Is there a gap? Because I have some stuff I can talk about. Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. I'm surprised this question hasn't come up, but there's two types of anchor text distributions that uh, I didn't touch upon. And I'm just kind of realizing that this now. What about internal anchor text, right? So you're linking from one page on your site to another page on your site. So is there any kind of anchor text distribution that works best? So we single variable tested this as well. And we, we tried different configurations. So we tried 100% target anchor text, 
80% target, 20% miscellaneous, 50% target, 20% brand, 30% miscellaneous, all these different variations go into various pages on websites and we track ranking improvements or unimprovements over time. We found that the best configuration is 100% target anchor text, but then vary it up. So never the same anchor text and just hitting all these different variations of the keyword you want to rank for gets the best result. But slightly less better result would be going 80% target anchor text and 20% miscellaneous. Click here, read more of this article, etc. Now, most of the time, I'm recommending people do the 80-20. So 80% target, 20% miscellaneous, because it gives you some margin for error. So a lot of times people are outsourcing this to virtual assistants and that don't have the same level of detail that you would because it's your site and you care a lot. So I kind of recommend the 80-20 in this kind of situation. But if you're doing it yourself, go ahead and do 100% targeting your text. Just keep it varied. The other type of anchor text distribution I didn't touch upon is tier two link building. So if you're sending links to a tier one property that's linking to you, you want to keep it blended and varied up. You don't need to go to the extent of doing this analysis and figuring out the exact the keywords and, and, and reverse engineering, what's the anchor text distribution for the top competitors. You don't need to go to that length, but just give it a, a blended anchor text. Just you can, be, you can even use the generic framework that I gave you earlier. The ultimate goal here is if you can get that page that's linking to you to rank and get some traffic itself, then that becomes more valuable of a link to you. So just keep it blended. Give it a chance to rank. That's what you're trying to do. All right. Um, Brent has a question in here um, kind of about, you know, uh, when it comes to the ratios, you said, you know, remove and replace. So he's talking about PBNs. Uh, he says, um, what, what should we do if we've given direct PBN links to our website and now we want to use guest posts and then power them up with uh, the PBN links? Is it safe to remove the PBN links um, and point them uh, uh, and pointing the same PBN links to the guest posts that we get? Mm, okay, so... Right. Um, well, the first part of your question is it's safe to move the PBN links. Like, yeah, that's absolutely true. We always, it, at LeadSpring, when we're working on our own affiliate websites, obviously we don't dis do this at my client agency, but when we have affiliate sites that have PBN links to them, when they start to hit an authority status, then we start to peel them off to just kind of clean things up. And yeah, you can totally remove PBN links and it'll stay ranking. You just need to replace that link juice with some white hat links, right? Now your question is, I've, I've removed those PBNs, everything's going fine, my rankings have held, I replaced the links, et cetera. Can I use those same PBNs to link as a to my tier ones that are linking to this page? If I'm as answering this completely tin hat, I would probably say it's, it's a tiny bit risky, but I wouldn't do it. I'd just, I would just use other PBNs for that, but I mean, you're not likely to get to get busted for it. Like, uh, from what I've seen, the algorithm is isn't checking historically. It doesn't have that much historical checking. So, I would say go for it, but play at your own risk. All right, got it. Um, that looks um, that looks to be uh, about it as far as questions go for right now. All right. Well, thanks a bunch, Jake, for getting my back on this. Thanks everybody for showing up here. I hope this was helpful. If it's if you have any like kind of follow up questions or anything like that, just you know, find me. This will be posted on YouTube, so you can make a comment there. And I appreciate everyone's time. And take care. We'll see you next time.